Today, let's look at the two most common issues that people face when using Oracle's free tier, particularly when you're trying to get those four CPUs and 24 gigabytes of RAM. Now, Oracle's free tier has become very popular and it's been very difficult now to actually get access to these uh, virtual machines. So you often get that out of capacity error. So I'm talking about when you try to create an instance with Ampere processors and you get that out of capacity for Shape VM standard A1 Flex. I'll show you how to work around this one. And the other really common issue people run into is this one where you get an email called Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Compute Resource Maintenance, and they are talking about reclaiming idle resources. So if you've created this big server and you're not really using it, you may get this email and they might actually stop your instance if you haven't uh, used it enough. So you'll have to actually go in and restart your instance whenever they uh, do this to you. But I'll show you some workarounds to avoid this happening to you as well. What I mean is people sometimes get an email like this. Um, the idle instances will be stopped seven days from now. If this happens to you, um, I'll show you a workaround for this. Anyway, let's just start with the out of capacity error. So you can actually use a script to keep retrying until you succeed, or you can actually just upgrade your account to a pay as you go account and only use those free tier resources so you never need to pay. So either of these ways will be able to get around that out of capacity error. Let's talk about the first one, using a script to retry. So over on Medium, there is a tutorial by Alexander Hitrov. I'll link to that in the description and that'll actually just run a script that retries every five minutes or so to generate a um, instance on Oracle's free tier until it works. So that takes, um, most people have reported a few days they've managed to generate an instance using this. Um, the script is actually hosted over on GitHub. I'll link that as well. And for those of you who like video tutorials, he's actually published a really nice little video tutorial to go along with this as well. So I'll link all of those below if you wanna try this method out. The other method is to upgrade to a pay-as-you-go account and only just use those free tier resources so you never actually need to pay because pay-as-you-go accounts actually have priority and you'll be able to create those Ampere instances much more easily if you upgrade your account. I'll show you what I mean. So if you're using a free tier account, you'll have this purple banner at the top here. And if you want to upgrade, you can use the upgrade link there. You just add a payment method and upgrade your account. And as long as you stick to using only the always free services, you'll never actually have to pay even though you upgraded your account. Um, you can still access the always free services. They're always free no matter what kind of account you're using. And for those of you who are a bit worried about accidentally generating a bill by doing this, you can actually go to billing and cost management and set up a budget. And under budgets here, you'll get a budget thing. You can actually create a budget that will just alert you if your forecast spending is going to go over, say, one cent. So I'll show you how to do this. So let's just create an example here. I'll call it budget forecast exceeded. Um, choose your compartment, choose your root compartment there. Monthly, first day of the month. Budget amount in dollars. The minimum is $1. So just put $1 in there and put forecast spend percentage of budget, say 1%. So if it's forecast to go over 1% of spending, say 1 cent, then it's going to send you an email and you can put your email in here. So I'll put idea spot class in here. And if actually I get a forecast that well, I've done something that actually costs money rather than using free resources, it's going to send me an email so I can turn those things off if I don't want to spend any money. So go ahead and do that, um, gmail.com, and then I can create the rule. That should be all good there. So now I've got my, it should show up in a second here, my money to reload. And there we go. We've got our example um, budget alert there. If I actually spend more than 1% of $1, it'll give me an email. I can turn those things off to avoid ever getting a bill. But really that should never be necessary. These um, are very generous free tier limits. And if you stick to those limits, then um, it's never going to be an issue. One really annoying thing about adding a pay-as-you-go account is it does do a $100 verification authorization on your card. So that is a temporary $100 charge that it puts on your card. It instantly refunds it, but it does take a day or so usually to come back into your account. So that can be really annoying for those of you who are on a really tight budget and don't want to see $100 disappear. So someone did raise that in the Oracle support and then it, they did actually confirm that, yeah, this is just a verification hold charge. It'll be refunded. Um, and then you can contact your bank if you're wondering about how long that's going to take and you can contact Oracle support on that email about the billing that will um, explain what that process is like if you have any concerns. But um, that just is one little thing I'd want to warn you about if you're worried about upgrading to that pay-as-you-go uh, account. So after comparing these two options, I know a lot of you probably want to try the script method to retry until you get one of those Ampere instances. It is technically quite difficult. You do need a bit of skill to actually pull this off. So it's probably a good time to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. 
So thanks Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And the class that I like on Skillshare is one called WordPress Academy, Learn WordPress Step-by-Step -step by Chris Dixon. This one is 85 lessons, eight and a half hours. So much deeper than the content you'll find on YouTube in this topic. Now, this one really lets you go deep into the back end of WordPress. It teaches you about the PHP behind how WordPress actually works. And you can do customizations, custom themes by following this class. So I've really enjoyed this one. And Skillshare were nice enough to give me my own link in the description. And so the first 1,000 of you guys who use the link get a free one month trial for Skillshare. So check that out if you're interested. I wanna to continue to be my own boss. And so Skillshare is where I can learn freelance tips for starting new side projects, attracting the right clients and developing a business. Traditional jobs are not one size fits all. So learn how to design a career to fit you. My goals are to improve my skills in web development and to reach new audiences through video. Improving in these areas will give me greater control over my career and creative path. Now I'm a Skillshare member myself and one of the classes I've currently been interested in is this one called From Clueless to Content Creator, Make Engaging Videos That Attract an Audience by Aaron Palabiab. This one has been very helpful in terms of how do I make my tutorial videos more engaging and create the most value in the most compact amount of time. I think people have really engaged with this compared to a lot of other tutorials that are waffly and long or don't really deliver the thing that they said they're gonna deliver. I make sure all my videos deliver and my most successful videos are very good examples of that. They've been able to deliver a lot of value in a very streamlined amount of time. So thanks to Skillshare for um, pointing me in this sort of direction. Again, that free trial link is in the description, but let's get back to our video. All right, now let's talk about our second issue, dealing with Oracle Cloud's resource maintenance. That means when they consider your instance to be idle and they stop the instance and then the resources go um, back into the pool so other people can use it because they think you're not using it enough. So number one, actually use your virtual machine. So make sure you finish setting up your machine properly, run a web server, a game server, a file server, something that will actually use the resources and set it up appropriately. So if you're just running a little blog, don't use 24 gigabytes of RAM, maybe just use four or five or six gigabytes of RAM. In my experience, whenever I've actually set something up properly on one of the virtual machines, I've never gotten one of those emails. So it is fairly easy to avoid um, the idle issue if you actually use your server appropriately. Number two, if you don't want to actually do that, you can actually run an automated script to just make sure that you're actually using a little bit of CPU power all the time. I'll show you how to do that in a couple of ways. So a user called Erico has posted this on the Oracle Cloud Reddit. You basically just add a cron job that runs a little bit of work every, um, every five minutes and it'll just run for 46 seconds, a bit of CPU load. And just running that as a low priority in the background, it'll make sure that you are actually um, activating the virtual machine all the time and you don't get classified as idle. Um, he's, he's had some success with this script. Very simple, just one line that you paste into your um, terminal. Alternatively, there is another script I'll link to by drag and drop. It does a very similar thing, just runs a bit of load on the CPU. So either of those I think will do the job. And finally, you can always upgrade to that pay-as-you-go account because they're not going to um, delete idle instances if you're on a pay-as-you-go account. You'll get priority and you'll get to keep it even if you're not really running it that often. So again, if you do that, go ahead and create a budget alert to make sure you don't actually um, accidentally use any budget when you're running your um, pay-as-you-go account. All right, so that basically wraps up how to tackle those two really common issues on Oracle's free tier. If you are interested in any of these other tutorials I've done with Oracle, setting up web servers, game servers, file servers, I'll link to those in a playlist at the end of the video. So check those out if you're interested, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.